Hello, welcome to Chris Tech Rants. And now I'd be ranting about my ongoing journey on trying to improve my thermal efficiency for my RTX 3090 Extreme Water Force Water Block Edition. Or, no, yours RTX 3090 Extreme Water Force Water Block Edition with a big ski. It's quite a mouthful, right? Uh, with the X with the big ski uh, water block and active backplate and uh, I, I've tried a bunch of well not bunch uh, three pads big ski thermal right and gullied uh, thermal pads uh, before I proceed any further I'd be showing you my benchmark and stress testing results uh, then uh, then I'd proceed to the remarks I will just browse through the slides. Uh, if you guys want to see uh, a bit more, just pause the video. And I won't really explain the slides uh, per section. Uh, I'll do that later on. So here it is. So those are the results. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, share my configuration on what I ended up uh, using um, for the VRMs on the front side I used Bixky's stock thermal pads uh, for the VRMs I used Gelid's Ultimate 1.0 millimeter and Gelid's Extreme 0.5 millimeter uh, why it's easier to stretch out and easier to flatten a bit more uh, um, why is that? Because if I do not do that, uh, I will have a poor contact between the block and my GPU processor. So I had to do that and because of that, I have a slightly, um, uh, what do you call this, slightly higher VRAM temperatures opposed to if I just use a 1.5 gelids or a 1.5 thermal rights. Now, uh, those, uh, that's my setting for the front side, and for the back side, I just used uh, one point zero millimeter thermal pads, and for both gelids and thermal rights. So that's the setting I have in my GPU, and it's actually gi giving me a seventy two uh, to seventy six uh, VRAM temperature, and forty eight to sometimes it reaches 50 but it goes back to 48 degrees celsius for the gpu processor during mining uh, during stress testing uh, i get a maximum temperature of i get a maximum temperature of 54 55 degrees celsius for the gpu and about 76 degrees celsius for the 70 uh or correction uh 61 so, some 65 66 uh, degrees Celsius for the VRAMs during Fermark uh, stress testing. I didn't include in the I did not include it in the stress test results in the presentation because it's pretty non-standard. Um, it'll be unfair to Gelid if I share that information because I stack two pads together, uh, which isn't really uh, how you do things. So more on that later on. So that's my setting there. I tried thermal rights, uh, thermal right uh, config, thermal right pads, and it gave me it gave me a very good VRAM temperatures, very good uh, VRAM temperatures, but very poor GPU temperatures when gaming. So you have to make choose. Well, I had to choose an option. I can stick to 1.5 high rating thermal pad. Whether it's a gelid or a thermal right, doesn't matter. A uh, high rating 1.5 millimeter thermal pad, uh, it'll give me good VRAM temperature, but it'll give me poor GPU temperature. Or a slightly uh, thinner thermal pad, uh, but no, I, I don't have that option still. <laughs> Sorry. Um, going back about big ski stock pads. Thing here is the distance between my VRAM and the GPU block is one millimeter. For the VRAMs, it's one point five millimeter. The options for sizes in big ski thermal pads 
are 1.2 and 1.8 millimeter options. So the distance, because of course Bixi made the block, so they made an appropriate sized uh, thermal pad for it as well, obviously. But the thing here is the rating, the rating for the Bixi thermal pads are only 3.0 watts per meter Kelvin and it's a bit low and because of that low rating they actually produce a very squishy pad the compressibility is very good and when i'm using a big ski thermal pad uh, it's actually giving me a very nice gpu temperature gpu press processor temperature but uh, a high somewhat high vram temperature well not as high as the stock ones big ski is still better but if you don't have enough radiator to dissipate the heat, the heat, the heat, uh, you may actually uh, get uh, high temperatures as well. So just make sure you compensate, uh, or you you compensate that with a bigger or better radiator. Uh, at that time, I was only using a two two forty radiator, but switching to a three sixty radiator stabilized my temps for my big ski so that's one way of uh going another is get better pads get better uh sized pads and that's what i'd be doing next uh i will uh, try arctic arctic thermal pads next why i will choose the 1.5 size still uh opposed to this the the rating for these pads are quite high and as we may know, uh, as you increase your thermal conductivity rating, uh, you make the pads stiffer and more rigid. Meaning, uh, the reason why it's giving me a high GPU temperature because a 1.5 thick thermal pad with this thermal conductivity rating, I'm not actually able to close the block and the PCB together and it's giving me a, a high gap. A very big gap between the processor and the block and because of its stiffness I, I can't close the block properly and with the arctic uh, thermal pad the the rating for that is somewhere around six uh, watts per meter kelvin only uh, by that and its hardness is rated 20.0 so i'm hoping it's a lot a lot more compressible the than than these two so I hope I hope it works out and I'll be using the Fermark 4k stress test as reference so in my next video if I ever get hold of that Arctic uh, thermal pad I will just add in the Arctic thermal pad results uh, in here uh, for future reference to you guys so bottom line for this video is not to tell you not to use or which to choose uh, it will really depend on you. In my case, I could have stuck with the Thermal Rights or the Gelids uh, 1.5 millimeter thermal pads for my VRAMs. It would have uh, given me very good VRAM temps. I actually got uh, 62 degrees Celsius for my VRAMs in a pretty warm room. So that, that's good. Uh, 25 degrees Celsius uh, room. Um, but I'm not really using my computer mainly for mining. I use it for gaming and other stuff as well, uh, which is a bit more GPU processor dependent than the memory. So I'd rather see a balanced temperature uh, between the GPU and the VRAM opposed to getting only good VRAM temperatures. But that's me. Uh, if you're having, uh, or, or if you have the same configuration or same card, same block as I do, uh that's an that's a choice you'd have to make or try try other pads and if you did if you've tried a uh, thermal arctic or thermal grizzly already please share your results in the comment section uh i'd be happy to check them out and maybe do the same for my card so uh anyway uh that's it for now hope you like the video for more questions uh, just post it down in the comment section below uh if you if some of the people out there knows the answer feel free to respond and uh, 
Well, again, that's it for now. Hope you liked it and see you in the next one.